Uh, the Cold War. My favorite era. Back when we had no idea if Stalin would accidentally shit the bed one night and just say fuck it and throw the whole world into a nuclear holocaust. Well, don't get me wrong, I wasn't alive back then, obviously, but it must have been uh, comfortable to sleep at night knowing that he could just do that if he wanted to. Exaggerated jokes aside, I'm here before you today to talk about one of Stalin's most ambitious projects. The Tuplov T-U-95-L-A-L. You're probably sitting there wondering, what is so special about this aircraft? Well, don't worry, I'll get to that. But let's start with some things we know first. As we all know, Russia is a pretty huge place all things considered, and it has had many enemies throughout its history and modern day, some of which happen to be pretty damn far away. Meaning, it would require a great deal more effort to get there, like with fuel costs and ferrying costs and other ways to move things across the planet. So, bringing back an old elementary school joke we used to all make, in Soviet Russia, less is more. And so, on August 12th, 1955, the Council of Ministers of the USSR issued a directive ordering bomber-related design bureaus to join forces together in researching nuclear aircrafts. Andrei Tuplev and Vladimir Mayishchev? Huh, I guess that's how you say it. Anyway, they led the chief design teams and chose to focus on the direct style systems from the start, testing ramjets, jet engines, and even turboprops through the process. Tuplev, founded in 1992 by Ontrev, was primarily involved with aeronautics research and aircraft design estimated that the project would take nearly two decades before the program could make a resemblance of a working prototype. They estimated that it wouldn't be until the late 1970s or early 1980s that they'd have a working operational nuclear aircraft. So, the Tuplev Tu-95, nicknamed the Bear by NATO, is a huge four-engine turboprop powered by strategic bomber and missile platforms, it was first designed and flown in 1956. It was said to be one of the loudest aircraft ever made. The tips of the propeller move faster than the speed of sound at 343 meters per second. 1,125 feet per second for my fellow Americans. And so they took that and slapped a whole ass nuclear reactor onto it. Look, I don't know what you're thinking. But my thought process is, what? You're just gonna slap a nuclear reactor on there and call it a day? I mean, maybe Fallout was onto something at this point. And so, the reactor known as the VVRLIOO was placed in the bomb bay of the aircraft, requiring fairings over the top and bottom. It successfully took off and landed over 40 research flights, although the reactor was not operating on any of them. The main reason for these flights was to examine the effectiveness of the radiation shielding, which was their foremost concern. They primarily used four things for protection. Liquid sodium, beryllium oxide, cadmium paraffin, wax, and, well, its efficiency is often disputed, but it was good enough to warrant further work at the time. And so with all that, the prototype TU-119 was started. With raising concerns of cost and environmental damage, as well as the US emerging with intercontinental ballistic missiles, this made the expensive nuclear aircraft program superfluous and it was scaled down. The next and final stage of development would be the Tuplev TU-19, a TU-95 with some modifications. It would have been powered by both nuclear-fueled and kerosene-fueled turbo engines, as well as two Kezentov NK-14A nuclear-fueled engines inboard and fed with heat from a fuelage-mounted reactor. 
Unfortunately, it was never completed due to the nuclear-powered bomber project being cancelled on grounds of cost and the environmental impact of mishaps and accidents. So we're left with, well, nothing. We may never know if it's possible. I mean, maybe it might have furthered nuclear research in our ages, or it could have been our downfall. Nonetheless, please let me know what you think in the comments below, and thank you for watching. If you have any opinions or critiques about this video that you'd like to see me change or work on, uh, please let me know. If you did like my content, feel free to leave a like and subscribe. It'd let me know that you'd like to see me make more of this type of content in the future. Either way, thank you.